Hello and welcome back and today I want to compare a couple of NASs but let me let you behind the curtain a little bit okay when I make a lot of these comparisons they're generally worked out in three ways number one it's a new unit that's just been released and I want to compare it against its predecessor to see how it fares up Number two, it will be a comparison against one of its rivals. Maybe it'll be Synology versus QNAP or Ace Law versus QNAP or Synology versus Terramaster. It could be any of those. But the third one, the third kind of comparison I do is ones that you guys ask for. This is very much a one-man operation. I don't do a lot of stuff with much cooperation. I've got a little bit of help here and there, but this channel is largely me on my own. So the result is to make so many videos and so many articles and stuff like that, it means that I generally try to scan the comments as much as possible. And if I can reply, I do, but again, one guy. But at the same time, you guys have been asking about these two to be compared for an exceptionally long time. Not just since the 920 was first announced, but non-stop, every day I have people asking me to compare these two units. And there's lots of reasons for that, but there's about a year difference between them. They're not even that comparable in a number of ways. One of them is a 5 bay, the, um, the DS1019 Plus. And this is a 4 bay, the DS920 Plus. And they do bring different things to the table. In the, at their core, they're very similar. They're both disk station NASIs. They're both Synology Intel Howard NASIs that can be expandable, that they've got NVMe SSD cache. But at the same time, they both seemingly have a lot of distinction between them. A number of you have already budgeted what you need for your NAS server and have looked at these two devices and gone, what do I want more of? More modern internal hardware or more storage? Because that's one of the main differences between them. They tweak to the specifications in a number of core ways. And throughout this video, although I am comparing these two NASs, I'm not really going to talk too much about Synology software. It runs very, very well on both of these devices. You know, video station, photo station, music station, drive, office, chat, um, active backup suite, uh, suite, hyper backup, chat, all of those client apps, surveillance station, virtual machine manager, they all run very well on these two devices. Likewise, they both arrive with support of 8 gig of memory. So both of them have got that 8 gig of memory, memory available to you as a maximum limit, but the 1019 arrives with 8 gig by default, with this uh, 920 arriving with 4. Now, architecture-wise, as I say, they're very, very similar. The reason I'm not going to talk about software much in this video is because if you've already narrowed it down to these two devices, you've already done a hell of, uh, probably a heck of a lot of research into Synology software and its utilization for things um, of the first-party variant or the third-party variant. Maybe you're using it as a third-party cloud and you're utilizing it um, in conjunction with your own services, Office 365, G Suite. Maybe you're using it for Plex Media Server. They both support 1080p and 4K transcoding, but I'll talk about that more later on. What I'm saying is, in terms of software capability, these two are remarkably similar. The only real core difference in terms of software i found so far has been with regards to transcoding, with between these two, the encode and decode of certain codecs being ever so slightly better on the 1019. But if I am talking with Plex Media Server and the fact it's utilizing that driver that's causing a bit of problem with regards to performance in Plex, do check out my um, Plex comparison where we looked at the CPU inside these devices. Now, that CPU is another matter of importance as well. The CPU in the brand new device is the J4125, a quad-core uh, 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.7 per core. And again, with that and its support of UHD Graphics 600 and the fact that it supports DDR4 memory, higher frequency at 2,666 megahertz, you do seemingly have better internal hardware. Now, the older device utilizes a CPU that's still very popular in the world of NAS, the J3455. That CPU's been sort of knocking around in NAS for about two and a half, three years. It's a 1.5 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz. It's got UHD Graphic 500, and it arrives with support of DDR3L memory at 1,866 megahertz. Now, there's two memory slots inside, two slots of four gig, each one of them with official Synology memory. In the 920, there is a four gig slot available to you to upgrade with a Sodium DDR4. And again, you've got to use the official memory according to Synology 
But on top of that, the other 4 gig internal is soldered to the board. So you can't upgrade that other slot. Now, on the face of it, you might not want to, given that the official and Intel official supported max memory is 8 gig. But we have stuck unofficial memory inside both of these devices, with the older generation 1019 going up to 16 gig, an unofficially supported memory using um, double, uh, sorry, dual rank crucial 16 gig did, uh, memory of two sticks of eight, and the newer generation device going up to 20 gig with that 16 gig module. So I know in terms of hardware, they do seem to sort of meet in the middle there, but it has to be highlighted that in general operations in almost every way, the newer generation NAS will do more things with that hardware. It's not about the height of the software because they're both gonna perform incredibly similarly in each software application you use. It's just gonna be a question of how much resources it uses while doing it and how many simultaneous users and simultaneous apps can be run at once with that hardware. And in those stakes, the 920 does take the lead on that. And again, it's all dependent on how you use your system and what applications you're going to run. Now, both of them support three and a half inch media. Both of them support up to 16 TB Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drives, as well as those new 18 TB WD Gold drives. Again, a huge amount of storage potential, but obviously the five bay is going to give you more storage because it's got the extra bay. It's got the extra memory inside, and that's one of the things that makes up the 120, 130 quid price difference between them. But that extra bay for a number of you is what makes the difference between RAID 5 and RAID 6. A huge difference there, because obviously you can use a RAID 6 on a 4 bay, but it's basically like a slightly different parity version of a RAID 10, another option open to you. And I know a number of you that have lost data in the past will want to have a good, robust, two-tier RAID option. It's not a backup. You've got other things you want to put in, a cloud, a USB, another NAS, but still, nevertheless, that extra bay may really make the difference to you because in terms of build quality, they're near enough identical. They've got the same click and load trays, still the same locks there. The internals are near enough identical in that regard. They've both got the LEDs built into the side there. They've both got the USB port there built into the front. But as you can see on these devices, neither one of them has got that click um, one touch copy button. The architecture is very similar. They're both using plastic chassis. They both utilize that Synology vented panel there on the side. And if we look at the base, they've both got the NVMe SSD caching bays there built in, which allow you to add super fast NVMe SSDs and ultimately improve your performance substantially with internal operations. Now I say internal operations, let's face it, that's because both of these devices do not feature 10 GBE or 2.5 GBE. If we look at them nice and close, we can see just how similar they are overall. I mean, again, even the chassis color is near enough identical. It's mainly the light that's making them look any different at all. Now, if we look at the ports on the rear, we'll see that again, they're near enough identical. But going back to that point I just said about 2.5 uh, GBE, a number of people, myself included, assumed that Synology in this generation would have made the jump towards 2.5 or even 5 GBE as standard. I know some of their newer generation business units are dabbling with um, 2.5 GBE, such as the DS1621XS. And with the newer generation of business units coming soon, I wouldn't be surprised if 2.5 GBE becomes the standard of that generation. But again, a number of you because this device doesn't have those increased LAN slots, you've got the SSD caching to really boost up the performance, but you feel like there's a bottleneck there on the rear. Now they've both got expandability with that ready SATA port, and that means you can add another five bays of storage. So total of nine, total of 10, hence the naming strategy. So again, that little extra drive does make a peak of a difference there. Ultimately, it's not a huge difference because if you're going down the expansion route, then OneDrive is much of a much less if you're going to bolt on five later on. But overall, in terms of architecture, it should be said that the 1019 will typically use more power and make a little more noise. One, because of the extra storage bay. But two, because the device is using a slightly less 
um, efficient CPU than that of the one in the 920. It's going to use more power and it might generate a little bit more heat, which means the fans are going to have to ramp up a little bit, typically in use. Same goes for CPU and power utilization. The result's going to be that the numbers are just going to be a pinch higher on the 1019 Plus overall. Because remember, average situation, both of these NASs are going to perform very, very well with that intelligent background caching of DSM, taking advantage of any available memory and flushing it when needed. But even though they're going to work identically, it should be highlighted that the 920 is going to use a little less power to do it, both in a single user scenario and a group user scenario. And again, do check out my CPU comparison on that Plex video about two weeks ago. But other than that, the, the two devices are remarkably similar. They've both got three years of manufacturer's warranty that can be extended. They've both got support of DSM 6.2 and DSM 7 towards the end of the year. And because of the way they've got the memory architecture and the caching in the base, they can both take advantage of when DSM-7 arrives with its great um, background caching options. They're both going to give you a great level of support on that. So it's very hard to choose between them. Now, there are other factors here at play. So the 1019, I genuinely, and I can't say I've got any information on this, I think this is due an upgrade. I think... If they've upgraded the 20 series on that two-year release pattern, I would expect a 1021 before the end of the year. Now, that is purely speculative. That is not based on anything evidentiary. It's not based on anything I've heard. It's just when you look at the strategy of the company and you look at the way the 920 and the way they've tiered a lot of these solutions, I would not be surprised if the 1019 in its next iteration is a 2.5 GBE model, and therefore it will be a lot smoother in the food chain of Synology's NAS portfolio. Now, again, take that with an enormous pinch of salt, but to me that might be enough of a reason not to invest in either of them, which I know, if I was a salesman, that would be a terrible sales technique. Lucky that, isn't it? But to me, that's something else to sit on. And if you don't hear about a 1019 being announced, in perhaps September, when Synology no doubt will do their launch event, whether because of recent events with COVID and isolation, that's going to become more of an e-platform thing or something that's done in person, we'll have to find out. But the fact still remains that I think that's enough of a reason to sit on the fence regardless. But if you do need a NAS solution right now and you're trying to pick between these two, ignore the memory, ignore everything and just bring it down to that Bay, because I don't think the CPU and memory increase in the 920 weigh up as heavily against the extra storage potential of the 1019, as well as the improved RAID options that are open to you from the beginning. And scalability, if you're going to buy a NAS and not fully populate it and you want to add drives to your SHR down the line, that's a good enough reason. If you're someone that prioritizes storage, 1019 is going to be a solid bet. You wouldn't be comparing these you know, unless storage was important to you. Now, if overall performance is more important to you, if the number of users that are actively going to be accessing this device at any given time, or you're going to be running multiple apps at once, such as Plex Media Server with some surveillance in the background and a multi-tiered backup strategy for your phones, laptop, tablet, and more, 920 may well be the one for you because that deficit in the one bay of storage is easily compensated with that expansion later down the line, as well as upgrading that memory as and when needed. I would ignore the fact this arrived with 8 gig rather than 4 gig overall. For me, it comes down to that storage bay in this comparison. Now, I hope you guys have found this video helpful today. I'm sure it's a little, I'm sorry it's a little all over the place. It's just very hard comparing two devices here, which is a different chief focus amongst them. Hopefully there's an As Compare article in the description as well, but don't forget to click like if you've enjoyed this video, click subscribe to learn more, and I will see you next time.